All right, everybody, Hill, and welcome back to another episode of Midgard Musings. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Jesse, and I'm the host here on this channel. If you're into things around Norse mythology, uh, Germanic paganism, Germanic heathenry, uh, that sort of thing, I uh, invite you to please subscribe to the channel right here down below. You'll see that subscribe button. Go ahead and click that, and then if you don't want to miss anything, click the bell notifications next to the subscribe button so that way you're notified every time that I upload new content. Uh, today's video is going to be the uh, episode 14 as a continuation of the deity discussion series. I have a playlist section of the channel. You can go out and check out uh, all the previous episodes in that series. We've covered quite a few of the Norse gods and goddesses, and today's deity that we're going to be talking about is the goddess Eir. Um, she's got a lot of uh, prominence in, in the mythology and in the lore, and uh, wanted to kind of go a bit into why I think she's so uh, why why she's so uh, such a prominent figure, why she's talked about and, and is ranked as, as such a high-ranking goddess. So. Um, her name itself, the etymology, uh, so much as I'm able to find anyways, um, pretty much means uh, helper, healer, um, that of, of mercy, very compassionate uh, connotations to her name. And uh, she's counted as one of Frigg's handmaidens, Frigg being the, I guess you could call her uh, chief goddess or mother goddess uh, in the Norse pantheon, wife of Odin. Um, also associated with a lot of various things like so many of the gods and goddesses um, in uh, you know, Germanic paganism are uh, associated with not just one or two things but many things and Frigg uh, being kind of the uh, chief figure that I see associated with the hearth and the home, um, mothers, healing, uh, magic, satyr, that sort of stuff. Air is uh, talked about in some of the sources as being one of Frigg's handmaidens. Um, she's also uh, attested in, uh, or depicted I should say, in some other uh, skaldic poetry as a companion to Vor, who's um, talked about mostly, I believe, in the Snorri Sturluson's Prose Edda as a goddess uh, associated with vows, specifically wedding vows, um, and the legislation that benefits uh, sort of the f uh, feminine or women roles uh, of families. Um, so, like I said, there are different references to air in both the poetic and prose eddas. Poetic edda being the, um, you know, poems within the poetic edda uh, uh, being considered some of the oldest known sources that we have, known written sources that we have, and the prose edda being Snorri Sturluson's work uh, that kind of compiles all of the uh, poems and stuff from the poetic edda into a bit more of a uh, organized fashion. Um, but her inclusion in both of those sources um, has led to a lot of discussion as to whether or not Air is a goddess uh, in the Norse pantheon, whether she is a, uh, a Valkyrie, um, or if you know these sources refer to two different figures, if she's one in one and something else in another. But um, either way, um, Air is described <clears throat> as a figure of life. Um, and, and somewhat of a, uh, a chief figure, or, or perhaps one might call a patron uh, deity to those who work in the field of medicine, the medical field, healers. Um, uh, she's, you know, familiar with all sorts of treatments um, as part of one of the uh, 12 or 13 highest ranking goddesses. Um, when I say highest ranking, I mean in Snorri Sturluson's prose that we'll talk a little bit about that there's a list of uh, who are called uh, Osinur and the female, you know, the goddesses, if you will. Um, but she is, uh, you know, Eir is, is, is particularly skilled with herbs and, and as we know in, uh, you know, proto-heathen times or arch times, healing um, and medicine was nature-based, of course, you know, there weren't any of the synthetic drugs and whatnot that we have nowadays, so all of the healing aspects um, were done through natural, uh, naturally occurring things, uh, stuff that you can source um, and, and get available to you from growing or, or harvesting naturally. Um, <clears throat> but there's a poem in the Poetic Edda, um, and in that poem there, uh, Er is said to sit on uh, this hill, and the hill's name is uh, Liefeburg, 
okay? And that is a word in Old Norse which literally means the hill of healing, right? Um, and it is said that, uh, that if women were to climb this hill uh, or climb this mountain, then air uh, healed them of any diseases or any ailments. Um, and it's even also, I think, mentioned a time or two maybe in that same poem uh, where air was uh, not just, you know, skillful in healing the living, but also had the ability or the, or the skill uh, to resurrect the dead. So, um, going to Snorri Sturluson's prose we hear a bit more about air in uh, the first part of, of the prose of the poem called uh, Gilfagini. Um, and in there she is described as the best physicians, or the best physician, I should say, among the Norse gods and goddesses. And um, again, she's ranked as one of the uh, 12 or 13 highest uh, ranking goddesses uh, as an a senor. And um, she possesses the ability to, you know, heal. Um, she has the gift of foresight, the predicting of the future, similar things that we see um, surrounding things uh, that Frigg is specifically associated with, or, um, you know, with her weaving uh, on the loom and seeing the things of future, things that she doesn't speak of, but that she sees nonetheless, so we see some similarities. Um, uh, one interesting thing to note uh, with Eir's name is that it is commonly used, or has been commonly used as a kenning uh, for a woman, or, or for women in general, because, um, or, or I see it as, as an interesting thing anyway, because um, we see that in Archeden times, especially the role of the healer uh, was a role typically held by the women folk. Um, there's even folk traditions that holds um, of, of air being invoked in healing rituals. Um, and there was a, a native flower, the air flower, I believe it was called, a white flower that was used um, in those healing rituals. Maybe there is even some medicinal or healing properties, literal healing properties to this specific plant. Um, one other thing that we read about in the Poetic Edda is um, that she's attested uh, to being a companion of a particularly kind and compassionate Jotun uh, named Mengloth. And uh, the two of them are uh, perhaps invoked at the same time uh, for healing uh, together as they are colleagues or they work together with one another. Um, some folks may be a little disturbed thinking about, you know, uh, goddess uh, being associated with the Jotun race, but I don't really see any, you know, problem with that or, or, or figure out why that would be disturbed because the the races of the divine, you know, whether they be Jotun or whether they be Aesir or Vanir gods and goddesses, um, they're all in the realm of the divine and of the sacred, so you just have different elements that exist within the, the two different ones, so uh, I think it's pretty clear that, um, Air and Mengloth are, like I said before, colleagues, if you will, they work together. Uh, so when it comes to Air working at, uh, you know, the, the Liefeberg uh, Hill, um, she defers to, you know, perhaps you know, Mengloth's healing capabilities, whereas uh, the other way around, if, if there were things being done in, in Asgard or in, in the realms of the gods outside of that area. So they work together. Uh, we see or we hear about it in the lore that they work together. and. Uh, um, you know, I don't know if, if the, the, the combination of the two of them working in, in different areas or different parts of healing, you know, if that's had that ever happened or, or if that's even something to consider. But uh, I suspect that healers in general um, are less likely to care about who does what where. You know, well, this is my area. You're 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 one of the gods. You should do this, and I'm over here, and I should do that. It's there's no real sense of. of fighting against the, the politics of, of it, right? It's just we need to fix the, the wounded, we need to heal the sick. Uh, this is what we do, and this is, you know, who cares about the politics and the wars uh, going on between the Jotun and, and the gods, you know, that sort of thing. Um, now, the reason why I, I thought it was a, a, a timely um, point to bring up air specifically in our daily discussion series is because, you know, a lot of stuff going on right now in the world. We've got the coronavirus thing that's getting a lot of attention. Um, all these various uh, sicknesses and ailments and things that are flowing around 
uh, all over the world. Um, but uh, you know, ailments and illnesses go way beyond just the physical parts. You know, healing of those ailments uh, and healing of ailments goes beyond the uh, physical maladies and, and things that, that can attack our physical selves. We live in times now specifically that uh, we have a lot more visibility um, of illnesses that attack the mind. Um, uh, so we see a lot of you know, cases of mental illness, various types of mental illness coming around. And I think even though it's always been there, there's a, there's a heightened awareness of it now. And there's a lot of, of people interested in wanting to uh, be healers uh, for, the, for the mentally ill, as, as well as healers for the physically ill. But we, I'm focusing more on that because it seems to be quite, uh, there's a lot of visibility. It's a high visibility sort of thing. Um, and with that being said, you know, I feel that whether it be the coronavirus or whether it be the flu season or whether it be, you know, severe, you know, uh, PTSD, um, you know, uh, other sorts of, you know, depression, uh, other sorts of mental illness, whatever that may be, anxieties, uh, panic attacks, all these sorts of things that, that uh, attack and, and affect people. Um, I think, and I don't see a reason why, that air's connection to healing wouldn't also include the ability to aid those who are suffering uh, from you know mental illness as, as much as, as physical illness um, for those that don't follow uh, Matthew Petrie's uh, group uh, Airs Embrace on Facebook I'm going to leave some information down in the description of this video because if you are um, you know a, a heathen specifically it's, it's a heathen safe space okay um, I, I just want to call attention to that it's a heathen safe space um, anybody and everybody is welcome there there's no judgment there's no anybody sitting there you know pointing fingers at everybody it's just a safe space for people to come and talk and release their stresses and, 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 and I think it's important you know I mean uh, in, in today's world with all the craziness that's going on there's that space that needs to exist for people to just feel that there's no judgment um, that nobody's being ridiculed or, or that they should feel that they're less of a person for feeling the things that they feel. And I believe that as modern heathens, um, one of the greatest ways that Air's uh, essences and Air's importance lives on with us in, as, in modern times, as modern heathens, is through things like what you know Matthew does and, and the people of that group uh, of Air's Embrace. And um, it really, I think, takes up the uh, embodiment of air, the compassion, the healing, the mercy, the love, the, 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 the caretaking, um, wanting to make sure that you are, are well taken care of. And as I like to do with the deity discussion videos, uh, if I've had particular dealings or, or involvement with the, with the deity, I like to go into that. And I have personally uh, invoked air for healing, and I have personally worked with her in my own private ritual for loved ones and family and um, wanting to have her note take notice uh, of things, you know. Um, of course, uh, from a practical heathen view, um, or, or my own particular worldview of things, I think that the things that have to do with ourselves, our families, our, our ailments, our, our ailments, uh, illnesses, things of that nature, um, we we should take care of our bodies. We should eat well. We should, you know. Um, consume things that are good for our bodies and take care of our bodies in a physical way which will transfer over into the to the mental aspect of things as well but um, outside of that the, the metaphysical parts of this sort of thing I feel that we first should go to our ancestors and those who have come before us that are tied to us through our uh, ancestral you know orlog and all that kind of stuff that the, 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 the topics of our family that have come down through the well uh, to where we are now that we should tap into those resources um, but that air is uh, is spoken about as being the physician and the best physician of of, of the gods, and uh, that we see that you know we have known of examples, anyways, of her being invoked for healing rituals. So I think it's totally within uh, a reasonable you know spectrum of, of visibility that we as heathens would want to invoke her when we have things that are happening in our lives where we need just that little extra oomph for the healing, right? So I personally have worked with air. Um, her offerings have, have been received well, as I've, as I, you know, the omens that I've read and, and, and things that I've felt from working with her, uh, the gifts that I give in exchange for her, you know, 
healing powers, uh, the, the, the healing runes to be carved um, into the hands of the physicians or the, or the healers who are working with the people that I love. Uh, it's been received well and I've, and I've seen good things come from it. So I'm anxious to hear what everybody else who's watching this video, if you've experienced the power of Eir's healing, um, and if so, you can be, feel free to elaborate a little bit more on it. You know, the, the parts that I've experienced Eir's power and have been, been very close uh, family, uh, who, you know, major surgeries in their lives, and um, it's been a very, very warm and loving and caretaking sort of, of, of feeling when Eir is present. So, thank you all so much for watching today's video. I hope that this is giving you a little bit of uh, some more information or some more insight to think about one of the many gods of our pantheon and, and how you can or if you want to work with her specifically in your pagan practices um, definitely please feel free to leave comments down below i'm anxious to read and see what everybody has to say with your own involvement um, with with air and uh, those healing powers and things that exist so everybody that's watching live on facebook stick around thank you all so so much again for watching today's video don't forget to like comment share and subscribe hail and i will see you all in the next video